Ephesians. And last week, we uh, believe we wrapped up chapter four. Um, but for those that may not have been here or may not know where we are with the topic here of the sanctified church, say that with me, a sanctified church. And we made the point of the application that we point to yourself. If you've accepted Jesus Christ, you're the church. We're not talking about these walls, this brick and mortar and all of that driveway out there. None of that. We're talking about us. Amen. We're a mobile church. Amen. Everywhere we go, uh, we take the light of the truth with us. Is that right? Amen. So a sanctified church is a holy church. Uh, God calls from unholiness, uncleanliness to cleanliness. Amen. This picture is nothing new. It's not a new concept in the Bible. Amen. People vacillate between being unclean and clean. Amen. Amen. And so God had no problem with the condition that you're in when he delivers you. He asks you the question, do you want to stay in that condition? That's why I said, be ye holy, for I am holy. How many want to be holy? Amen. All right. The Bible said, without that, you shall not go to heaven. So every soul that seeks to go to heaven should want to be holy. Is that right? And we have been studying this particular series here after the book of Romans. And now we're in Ephesians chapter five today. But before we do, just like any old good train, you bag it up, hook up, and then go forward. Is that right? Amen. So with your Bibles open, if you would turn to Ephesians 4 for our reading, uh, verse 21, beginning in verse 21. And it says that here, that if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former, the word conversation means behavior of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed, how? In the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which is, which after God is created in righteousness and true sanctification. Amen? Wherefore, put away lying, Speak every man truth to his neighbor, for we are members one of another. He said, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather... Let him labor, working with his hands, the things which is good that he might have to give to him that need it. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying this building up, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, had forgiven you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your word. Father, we thank you for your spirit. And we thank you for your people. Lord, we could not be where we are right now had it not been for, the, for you on our side. Where would we be? 
Father, we want to stop and say thank you for saving our souls. Father, we want to thank you for renewing our hearts and our minds. And Father, we want to thank you for the joy that you have given us. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. So Father, give us daily bread, as you said in your word. Give us each day our daily sufficiency that we may be able to go through another day. For this is the day that you make. Lord, we shall rejoice, yes, and be glad in it. Father, we ask all of this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the church said, amen. amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Ursus. Thank you, Ursus. Thank you, nurses. Amen. Amen. Uh, giving reverence to God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We, we saw last week that we have to put on something. Uh, we have to put on the new man. But before we put on the new man, we have to take off the old man. Is that right? And we gave the analogy in the book of Leviticus, uh, the courtyard when God goes to build me a tabernacle so that I may be in the midst of my people. You can see as Israel camped around the tabernacle at the center and what have you, and God gave them instructions how to handle every aspect of their daily lives. Amen? And one of the things that in the courtyard, amen, which was the place where the burnt altar was, where they had to keep the fire burning at all times, God is the one that set the fire up on that altar. Man did not set that fire. God started the fire. Man was to keep it going. We said in Leviticus chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, that that's a picture of Jesus Christ and the works that Christ did on the cross right there. So we can see well on in the Old Testament, God was introducing us to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and everything that's sim uh, symbolic was symbolic of the work and the person of Christ. Jesus said of himself, you search the scriptures and in them you think that you have eternal life. But they are they that speak concerning me. Christ was trying to encourage us to take the word of God into our heart so that we can learn and we can honor the Father as well as the Son. And Peter tells us that grace and peace is multiplied to us through the knowledge of the Father and of the Son. Are you listening? So the priests who worked in the courtyard got bloody because when they received the offering from the people, they had to cut the throat of the offering. They had to handle the blood and the carcass. They had to take the carcass and make it right and put it up on the pit to yeah. burn it and all of that. And just before they went into the tabernacle, which was the holy place, there was a large labor there full of water. Water is symbolic of the Holy Spirit as well. Amen? And they would have to take off the garments that they had on that was all bloody and had all the... Uh, uh, the uh, 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 well, dealing with sin because the entire courtyard was overlaid in bronze and bronze is symbolic of sin. So sin was dealt with in the courtyard. Amen. But before they could go into the holy place, they had to remove, they had to take something off. They had to take that garment off and then they had to wash, say wash. And then they had to put on another garment, which allowed them to come into the holy place. Uh -huh. Now, had they took that garment in the courtyard, yeah. watch this now, and walked into the holy place without any washing or removing of that garment, they would be struck dead immediately. Yes, God instructed that. Amen? So, I mean, if you were a priest and you were operating in that area, you just didn't walk into the sanctuary before the presence of God with the things that were dealing with sin in the courtyard. So this picture here that Paul is giving us here at the church of Ephesus, he tells us that we have to take something off to put something on. Amen? Now, the stronghold that the enemy has in our life comes through these five things that we just mentioned. Amen? These five things are what keep people in bondage. The lying and what have you. All those things that he listed there. The, the filthy communication that comes out of your mouth. How many of you have ever cursed? Let me see your hand. 
Uh, I need to see at least more than that. Amen. All right. Amen. Peter cursed. Peter was one of the disciples of Jesus Christ. He was known for his salty conversations. Amen. Amen. So Peter cursed as well. Cursing is something that is a product of the flesh. It comes out because people that do not know how to express themselves in the Lord use their nature to express themselves, and that's why they curse. Amen? So whenever you hear somebody cursing, or whenever you curse, understand, that's not the Holy Ghost. That's not the Spirit of God. Amen? That's the flesh. Say, that's the flesh. Say it with me. That's the flesh. Amen? Don't give no credit. Amen? To, to, uh, don't try to say that with the Holy Ghost. God was telling me to curse you out. No. No. Amen. The Holy Spirit does not. His nature is totally opposite of our sinful nature. So God wants us delivered. How many of you want to be delivered? Amen. He just told you that in order to be delivered, and most people miss this. We saw this in Romans. Romans said that it gave us the analogy. He said, I speak to you, brethren, concerning the law, how that a woman is, is, is as long as she lives, is under the law of her husband. Now, he's not talking about marriage. He was not talking about marriage. He was talking about a relationship. Say relationship. And when you read this, he's talking about until that husband died, that woman is no longer free. But when the husband dies, it says, she is now free to marry another, even Christ. So the whole conversation was about your relationship with Christ, but the old man or the husband that he was talking about was the flesh. So you are married to your flesh when you're born. Amen? You didn't know that, did you? You thought you got married to somebody else out there. No, no, no. You are married to you before you marry anybody else. Amen. Amen. So when you are married to the flesh, the flesh has to die for the spirit to live. The same concept is here in Ephesians. You have to take something off before you put something on. Amen. So what God is trying to get us to understand here, we got to get it in the right order. A lot of people want to have it this way, but they want to keep it that way. It doesn't work this way. Amen. God gives us complete instruction. We can see it in the courtyard in Leviticus. Those priests had to take off the old garment before they could enter into the tabernacle. Now, once they got into the tabernacle, everything was overlaid with gold. Okay. Everything in the courtyard behind them was overlaid with bronze. Okay. Bronze is symbolic of sin. The gold was symbolic of the presence of God. Okay. Amen? How many of you want to be in the presence of God? Then you have to deal with sin in the courtyard. That's what he's telling you. Amen? So 1 John chapter 1 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to do what? Forgive. forgive us. How many need to be forgiven? I do. And cleanse us. How many need to be cleansed? From all unrighteousness. Now God has you ready to enter into his presence. And when he does, guess what he does? He fills you. He fills you with the Holy Spirit. Now the filling of the Holy Spirit is not what you may think. The Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, means to be controlled by the Holy Spirit under his control. But beforehand, the flesh was in control. That's why in the courtyard, something had to die. Amen? That animal, that sacrifice that you brought had his, his throat cut, the blood, it was put on the altar, the meat on the, on, the, on, the, on the burnt altar and everything, and all of that had to take place, and the ashes had to be removed and all of this. Amen? There was a portion for God. There was a portion for the priest. Amen. You did your part by coming to God, offering up your sacrifice. It's a picture of Christ being offered up on our behalf. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise right there. Amen. He died for our what? Our sin. He didn't die for our righteousness. No, 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 no. He died for the sinner. He died for all of our sin. And God gives us an opportunity to examine that in the scriptures. Amen. So you know how to live. You cannot think that you're okay. No. No. Amen. No. You cannot think. I was born and uh, I've never done anything wrong. I, really, I cursed just a little bit. I tell a couple of lies, but not much. No, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. You got to come clean with God. You were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. In sin, we were conceived, which means we came out to produce sin. That's all we produce is sin, whether it is little or much. Sin is sin, and the Bible says a little sin, a little leaven, leavens the whole lump. Amen? Amen. So we got to come the way God prescribes. God writes the prescription. We take it. Amen? 
So when God writes you a prescription, and the prescription is take Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. And then after you take him as your Savior and Lord, feed on him every day. Are you listening? Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. If any man hungers, let him eat from this bread. If any man thirsts, we say, I'm water. Let him drink freely. Amen? So we have to understand, God is trying to get us every day to partake of Jesus Christ. Not just the day you got saved. No, no. But each and every day. And if you wake up in the morning, if God allows you to wake up, amen? Amen? When you get up, your mind has to go where? To the word. Why? Because you need to be fed spiritually before you go to the table and eat those cereal, those Cheerios. Amen? You need a spiritual breakfast before you eat a physical breakfast. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Most of us do is just the opposite. We get the physical breakfast in. Amen? Then we say, now I think I have time room for spiritual breakfast. You've already messed your day up. You've already messed your day up. You already messed your day up. The best time is on the empty stomach. Amen? How many of you know they got messages you got to take on the empty stomach? Then they got other messages you got to take with food. Amen? Somebody said, I didn't know that. I thought you just pop it in your mouth and drink it. No, 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 no. There are certain types of medicines that you got to take on an empty stomach. Amen? Your spiritual breakfast, you need to take on an empty stomach. That's why you fast. You deny yourself from taking anything in. Amen? Now, once you get your spiritual breakfast on, amen, God will have no, no worries with you living the day. As long as you stay within the restraints that the Holy Spirit in you keeps you in. You say, mean I got that much freedom? Yes, you do. Amen? God does not put you in a box and say, stay there. He allows you to move wherever you, as long as you don't violate the word of God. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise right there. Amen? That's what it's all about, folks. So we got to take off the old. We got to deal, and we can't take it off ourselves. Now, I I, I'll be the first to tell you, I couldn't stop cursing on my own. Amen? Amen? I didn't get no shock treatment and stop smoking and all that kind of stuff like that. God had to remove. Everything was removed out of my life. God removed it. What God needs from you, what God needs from me, is the desire to have it removed. Amen? Once upon a time, long ago, far, far away, when I used to go to the barbershop, I had to get in the chair before the barber could do what he did. Amen. Same thing is true for you. For God to do what he needs to do for you, you got to get on the altar. We saw in Romans 12, it said, present your bodies what? A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable act of worship. So until you present your body to God, God can't use you. So it's something that you have to do. Once you present your body, once the offering was brought to the tabernacle and received by the priest, the priest took it from there. The moment you lay your life before the Lord, Lord takes it from there. Amen. 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 And then he creates in you both the will and the desire to do of his good pleasure. In other words, he is the one that motivates you to do what you do. How many want to live that life? Jesus said, I came to give you life. Huh? And life what? More abundant. The abundant life is not a couple of extra dollars, a nice ride. No, 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 no. Remember, the world has taken what God has said and twisted it. To make traps for fools. Say, bring me $9.99 and I'll show you $9,000. Everybody be up here if you thought that was true. But like P.T. Uh, uh, Barnum said, there's a fool born every day or something like that. A sucker or something like that. A sucker born every day. People can say whatever they want to say. And people run like they run right to it. But if you stay in the word and be led by the spirit of God, now that you're born again, he will lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. The key to the believer's life is to stay sanctified, stay clean. How you stay clean? Stay under the blood. Stay under the blood. Stay under the blood. Whatever you do, stay under the blood. Notice here in chapter five, we're going to try to go as far as the Lord. Let's go. So be prayerful. Would you do that? Amen. If you wonder about the Super Bowl, it won't be played till after this. I told them to hold the game until I get through preaching. <laughs> That's just a joke now. You know they ain't going to listen to me. Amen. 
in chapter five, we're still dealing with the same subject, but notice how the shift here. He talks about taking off and then putting on. So you got to be clothed. Can you see the picture in your mind? The priest in the courtyard, he has the courtyard garments. Now that he's finished the work in the courtyard, he has to go where? In the holy place. But he's not in the holies of holies yet. Remember, there are three different compartments, the courtyard, the, 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 the sanctuary, which is made up of the candelabra, which is overlaid with gold, the table of shoe bread, which is overlaid with gold, and the altar of incense, which is overlaid with gold. That's the sanctuary. Those three articles make up the sanctuary. Right. Amen? You see that in Hebrews chapter 9. He tells you. He said, but there was another door that had not been opened yet. He was talking about Christ, Jesus. In chapter 10 of Hebrews, he tells you that the veil which surrounded the courtyard, that's a picture of Christ's body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to get in first before you can go in all the way in. Amen. Amen. So in chapter five here, he says in verse one, he says, be ye therefore. He's saying all of this in light of what he's instructing, instructing us to do. It's a command now because he's already given us instruction. Amen. What to do. Now he's given us the commands how we are to live. Amen. As children of light. Amen. How many want to live as children of light? Remember, the light has to deal with, watch this, the light has to deal with the truth. You have to have truth resident on the inside of you in order to be able to have the authority and the power of God operational in your life. Let me give you an example. You go get a brand new car. You say, Rev, come out and look at my car. I just bought it off the lot fresh. It only had 20 miles on it. Just drove straight here and everything, but I'm out of gas. And I, I need, I want to take you for a ride. I want to, I need to get home. And uh, do you have $20? But I need to go get some gas. And the pastor said, well, I don't have $20, but I got a, I got a couple of bottles of water in here. <laughs> How many of you know that won't work? Why? I mean, it's liquid like gas. Huh? It'll go with no resistance into the tank. What's the problem? The design. The car is not designed to work off of water. It's not a hydrogen car. It's a gasoline-driven car, unless it's an electric car. Are you listening? Now, if there was a hydrogen car, water is good. But if it's, if it's gasoline-driven, what does it need? Gasoline. Amen. So to try to substitute gas with water, ugh, it doesn't work. Just try to substitute truth for knowledge or knowledge for truth, guess what? That doesn't work either. A lot of you have a lot of knowledge, but you have little truth. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the what? The truth, and I am the what? The life. He said, no man can come unto the Father except by me. How many believe that this morning? So the way, the whole goal is that once you are saved, God says, come unto who? All ye that labor and heavy laden, I will give you what? For who? For your soul. He said, my yoke is easy, my burdens are light. So the whole goal now that you're saved is to come to God, your creator, your maker. And you can't come on water. You can't come on knowledge. You come in truth. You got that picture in your mind? That's all right, sir. The priest could not get into the holy place with the out with garments on. That's all right. Mm -mm, but the sacrifices was no. Amen. The only thing that could be brought in there is blood. Yeah. And the blood had to also, when it came in, be put up on the articles there. Mm -hmm. On the uh, on Yom Kippur, once a year, the blood would be brought all the way in yes, into the holies of holies, and only one was allowed to go in before the Lord. And he himself had to make a sacrifice for himself first. Why? Because if he wasn't holy, <laughs> he wouldn't bring, bring your sacrifices in there. So he had to make one for himself and the other for the people. Are you listening? Can you imagine having that job? You're going to go before the Lord today. And guess what? If you ain't right, this is the day you die. Hello? So you have to know what you were doing based on how God prescribed how you can approach him. Why? Because God is holy. Amen? And he had to sanctify us, make us holy, so we can come into a holy, his holy presence. That makes sense for you? Amen. 
So when the priest got into the presence of God, he placed the altar on the altar there, on the ark of the covenant that was there. If God received it, then guess what happened? All the sins of all the people that confessed every day, morning and evening, which were written in a book, see, it was written in the book. What's your offering, your sin offering, it wrote down, you brought a sin offering for the sin that you committed. It was written, your name was written in the book. And you brought that offering because you sinned. You acknowledged I was sinning. You confess, in other words. Amen? But on the day of Yom Kippur, once a year, all your sins for all year that piled up were erased. Are you listening? God gave you a fresh start. Not a fresh start to keep sinning. Because he knew that with those sacrifices that you are nothing but a sinner, so all you're going to do is what? What do sinners do? Hey, you got that. Amen? But because you're a sinner, God made a, gave us prescription and a way for you to be holy in his presence so that he can deliver you from what is plaguing you. Because you need God more than God needs you. Is that right? Amen. So when he did that, the book was erased. There was a goat, a scapegoat that was brought. Yeah. All the sins of the people were placed on that scapegoat, and that scapegoat was sent out into the wilderness by a strong man to die. That's why God will never bring up your sins at all. Once you've been forgiven, yeah. God will not bring up none of your sins. How, ain't that good news? He will never say, you know what, then I forgot one thing. Man, when you did, no, no. God is a forgiving God. And he will not bring up, like the devil will always remind you of what you did. But God will never go back in your past and say, now, what were you thinking about then when you did that? God never does that. He's a forgiving God, but you must come to him. That makes sense? Amen. So you got that picture in your mind, right? The courtyard, the sanctuary, and then the holies of holies, where the ark of the covenant, that was God's presence was. Amen. You cannot go in there at all during the year or you would die instantly. Even if you peeped in there, bam, you would be dead. All right. Because only one person once a year on the day of atonement. Atonement means forgiveness. When God atones for our sins, what Christ did on the cross, the work that Christ, he atoned for the sins of the whole world. He, the whole world's sins are already forgiven. They don't realize it though. Amen. But until you receive Jesus Christ, amen, amen. You are walking around still dead in your trespasses and sins until you receive the blood of Christ. You receive the blood of Christ when you receive the person of Christ. That makes sense to anybody? Amen. So when he says here in chapter five here, walk in love, how are you going to walk in love? Sinners cannot walk in love. They can walk in lust. Amen. Those five things that he mentioned, amen, lying, stealing, and all that kind of stuff, bad communication, coming out, that's come from the flesh. But to walk in love means that you walk in the love of God. Hallelujah. How many want to walk in the love of God? I'm telling you, it's, it's, so, it's so peaceful. It's so powerful that you know it's not from, coming from you. It's like uh, the fire department, when they go fight a fire, they put these suits on. Amen. How many know what their suits are called? It's a special suit that if they go into a burning house to rescue somebody, that suit, because they have that suit on, that suit protects them and then gives them the ability to rescue somebody on the inside. But without that suit, they would burn up as well as the person on the inside. Next time you go to the fire station, you say, show me that suit you used to go in there. And they would show you and say, well, how, well, how did that work? How did that really work? Amen? That's why we had to put on love because if you don't put on love it's very difficult to do anything for god amen amen, amen. love the love of god is so powerful amen somebody can walk up to you sister blunt right now and slap you huh you feel what i just said and if you if, if, if the love of god is not ruling in your heart that gonna happen, Sister Blunt. They're gonna see Sister Blunt. No. <laughs> I'm just picking on you this morning. But I'm saying this, it was true to any of us. Am I right about it? Yeah. Am I right about it? Amen. So don't try to be a super Christian. Yeah. Amen. If you don't have the love of God, the anointing of God on you, folks, you're gonna act out the flesh. Right. 
So the love of God is so powerful that it can cause you when Christ was being beat over the head again and again and again. They were hawking and spitting in his face. Yeah. Are you listening? They were slapping in him after they blindfolded him and they prophesied. Who slapped you? Can you imagine? They were slapping God in his face. And guess what God did? Did nothing. Nothing. Don't you want that kind of love working in you? That you can resist all your enemies and amen. And don't open your mouth when sometimes your mouth wants to just go wide open and that unruly member in your mouth kind of take over. Say, I'm gonna give you a piece of my mind. You don't you need to keep all your mind. You don't need to get a piece of your mind. But truth, say truth, is what we walk in. And we walk in the love, the truth of the love of God. Jesus said, I am the way, not a way. He said, the truth, not a truth, and the life, not a life. Let me say it again. Jesus said, I am the way. The definite article is used there. He's pointing to himself. He said, I am the way to God. I am the truth of God. And I am the life of God. He said, no man can come to God except by me. Look at verse one, what it says. He says, be ye therefore, in light of what you just learned, followers of who? God as what? As dear what? Children. Why children? Why not grown up, adult, mature? No. You know why? Children are so innocent. They are, they're so unintentional that if they trust you and you tell them to do something, they're going to do it. Amen. Amen. We have to be led by God just as children. He says, suffer the little ones to come unto me for such is the kingdom of heaven. He said, unless you become like one of these, you shall know why it's in them. So we have to have a childlike faith, a faith that trusts the word of God. So you cannot walk in love until you trust and cling on and obey the word of God. Even though you have the word of God, you don't necessarily obey it, right? Didn't Adam have the word of God? Did he obey it? And that got him in trouble and us, didn't it? All right. See, even though you have the truth, you got to walk in it. When you walk in the truth, you're walking in love. Jesus says, you say you love me, you must what? Obey my commandments, my instructions. Look at verse 2. He says, and walk in love as Christ also, that's our example right there, had loved who? And had given himself, watch what he says, for who? For us, an offering. You see that offering? Remember, the courtyard, they had to bring an offering. Jesus Christ, John said it like this in the gospel according to St. John. He said, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Is that what he said? Amen. So Jesus is the Lamb of God. He both the, he both the shepherd and the sheep or the lamb. Amen. He says, and, and, and a sacrifice to God. For what a sweet smelling savor. When that meat was put up on that pit and the fat that was taken away from the kidneys and all that, the, the fat. If some of you know how to cook, you have to remove the fat on some meats. Amen. Liver had fat on it. That, that fat, when it was burnt on the altar, was a sweet smelling savor to God. Because fat, removal of fat is like removing sin out of your life. How many of you need some sin removed out of your life? It has to be removed, but the, the priest, he had a knife, and he knew how to take away that fat and then burn it. And when God smelled, he said, ah, it's a sweet savor to God. When a sinner allowed the Holy Spirit to take the knife of the word of God and remove the fat, mm, amen, God gets happy about that. Amen? Verse 3 says, but fornication, look what he says, but fornication What's fornication? What's fornication? Anybody? It's so quiet in here today. All right. Fornication is sex without marriage. That's fornication. Now, fornication, watch this. Fornication is spiritual. It's spiritual before it's physical. Okay. Now, sex was created by who? Please don't say the devil. 
The devil made me do it. Now, God created sex. Why? Because sex is a form by God in order not only to procreate women have children, amen, but it's also how God allows you to worship. Some of y'all missed that one. Amen. Remember Jesus said in Matthew 7, and they said, many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we did this, we did that, and all this. And he said, I shall we say to them, depart from me. I never knew you. That knew, the same knew that when Adam knew his wife, they had a baby. It's the same new. It's an intimate new. See, God see everything is intimate. If you're not in the word of God, you're not being intimate with God. And if you're not obeying God's words, you're not being faithful to God. It's called spiritual adultery. Are you listening? So you know to do, but you're not doing. The Bible said that's sin. Amen. Okay? Amen. So a lot of people, the devil has flipped the script on everybody. They say, oh, it's okay. Everybody's doing it. And when, hey, but they don't understand. They're in direct violation of the creator. The creator created everything. And if you want to know how things work, go to him. He'll tell you how it works. Amen? And he expect you to work it the way he said work it, not the way you want to work it, or the devil is tipping you to work it. That makes sense? Amen. She said, but fornication and all what? Uncleanness. Remember, you have to be clean. How we clean? With the blood. But uncleanness are what? Covetousness. And what is covetousness? An inordinate affection for something that don't belong to you. Have you ever walked in the store and wanted to pick something up that wasn't yours? And you did it with the intent to not pay for it? Yes. Happens every day. You might not be in the store, but you might be over somebody's house. Ooh, you got some nice dishes. And then you got your purse going and you're shopping. <laughs> I'll take one of these, one of these, two of these. <laughs> I can ask you if you've done it. We all are tempted. The devil has the temptation program. I ain't talking about the temptation that do like this here and be singing. I'm talking about the temptations that happen every day. None of us are bored of temptation. That's why we say in the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That makes sense to you? Amen. I hope it does. So God knows that when we are born again, we're in a territory. We, we, we're in a world that's full of this stuff. When he led the children of Israel into the Canaan land, they were full of giants, all kind of, they were fornicating, adults, they were doing all kinds of stuff. And you remember when Moses went up on the mountain to get the Ten Commandments, not the Ten Suggestions, what were they doing down in the camp? They were fornicating and committing adultery. They were having orgies while he was up there getting the Ten Commandments. So they had not long been out of Egypt before they let Egypt show up at the service. Are you listening, folks? They let you know that within us, we have no power Amen. not to sin. Are you listening? Unless you receive from God, right. you're going to act out your old sin nature. Are you understanding that? That's, that's the way it is, folks. That's the way it's scripted, okay? He goes on to say, he says, uh, let it not be once named among who? You as becoming what? Christians. Now, I know a lot of Christians that they look at this and say, they were talking about them back there at the church of Ephesus when Paul was living. They ain't talking about 2022 Christians. Amen? Understand, sin undoes. It will undo you. Sin will rob you of what God wants to do in your life. Do you understand that? God is holy. Say, God is holy. God. Say it again. God is holy. You got to get it in your heart, in your mind, that we serve, we serve, we worship a holy God. Now, once you get that in your mind, once you get the truth resident in your soul, if you want to steal something, fornicate, you ain't going to feel right. Oh, yeah, you do it. You say, well, why waste my $6, you know? You'll do it, but you won't get no joy out of it. You won't get that pleasure you used to get out of it. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Amen? Amen? Uh, I mean, it's funny how when you become a believer, one of the first things God unplugs is the joy of sin. 
Because most people, most sinners don't stop on a dime and, and, and make change. Uh uh. They keep on for another mile, two, three down the road. But the good news is that they saved. Yeah. Are you listening? Now they need to be sanctified. So God is talking to, Paul is talking to people that are in the same condition that you and I are in. Amen? God has no problem with the condition you're in. The question is, will you allow him to deliver you? Yeah. How many of you want God to deliver you? That's the key. You got to have a mind, Lord, deliver me. I'm in a miry place. I'm, 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 I'm living in this lifestyle that, uh, that's not of you. I know your word told me not to do it, but uh, every time the phone rings, how many know what I'm talking about there, huh? And I look at the ID and like, oh my God. Amen. The sin channel come on. Amen. Like play bunny, huh? Amen. I ain't talking about Easter either. Huh? Hello, somebody. But those things are, are appealing to our lower nature, which we have been saved and delivered from. Christ died for sins. Paul said, I am the chief of sinners. You can't beat me sinning. Amen. But God allowed him to write the majority of the New Testament. Why? Because God has gives us the power through truth, the power through truth to live for him. Look what it says on the next verse. It says, uh, verse four, neither filthiness, mm -hmm. filthiness. What's filthiness? I ain't talking about, you know, sweeping and mopping and dusting. Uh -huh. Remember, everything here is associated with the spirit. It's, it's, it's associated with the spirit. People that are filthy, literally filthy, have a spirit of filth. Amen? You deal with that spirit of filth, they go to cleaning up right away. Amen? Amen? It's not the mess that identifies them, it's the spirit that identifies them. So God, when you come to God, when you take off the old and put on the new, God on the new gives you the right spirit to deal with all the other stuff that kept you in bondage and that's oppressing you right now. Yes, you are saved. You know the Lord, but you're not living for him because you have not allowed the light of the word of God to shine in the truth of the light to become resident within your soul. You know, people that put on tattoos, they wear them proudly. Are you listening? We need to wear the word of God the same way they wear tattoos, proudly. Amen? He said, neither filthiness nor foolish talking or, nor jesting. You know, people that say, let me tell you a joke. <laughs> I got this joke I just heard. Let me, let me give it to you before I forget it. If this old girl, and then you know it. You know where it's going from there. Huh? Hello, somebody. It happens to us all the time. It happens to us all the time. Somebody walk up, catch us off guard. And they start telling us, before they know it, we find ourselves responding in kind. And what should you do? Lord, forgive me. I, I, I failed again. I failed you again. I'm not supposed to, I'm not normally not supposed to be entertaining that stuff. I'm not even supposed to try to learn that line and try to repeat it either. Amen? Sometimes you can't stop people from saying things, but you don't have to repeat it. Can you write that down for me? You know, <laughs> Yeah, I remember a guy came to me one day with a, with a foul joke, and it wasn't really that foul. It was kind of, clean. he cleaned it up. And he said, you ought to use this in church. I said, you're right. Yeah. Right. You think I'm going to take that to church, but you told me that you had, you had to clean up the bring it to me. Amen. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so let me give you my subject this morning. No, I ain't going to be like that. Amen. But people are out there like that. Why? Because they're unregenerate. They un, they, 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 they're still in an old frame of mind, folks. They're still in the flesh. He said, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of what? Thanks. Let everything that has bread. Praise the Lord. You know, if you get good at saying, thank you, Lord, you'd be all right. Somebody said, what do you mean? When you go out there and somebody hits your car, say, thank you, Lord. When they get ready to cut your lights off, say, thank you, Lord. Somebody say, Pastor, just don't flip. You got, got a problem. No, you got to learn how to thank you. Thank you. You know why? Because when God takes your life into his hands, he allows providence to, to guide you. So God is using whatever it is. When Joseph went into prison for something he didn't do, he had to say, thank you, Lord. Why? Because when you don't say thank you, Lord, you become bitter. 
And when you become bitter, you become just like the old flesh, the devil himself. You take on his image. Amen. Amen. When something negative happens to you, learn how to say, thank you, Lord. And everything gives. You've heard this before. But this is the what? The will of what? In Christ Jesus concerning who? That's the plan of God. So we have to know the plan of God. God said, I'm not going to let you go and discover it. I'm going to bring it right to your doorstep. Yeah. <laughs> so you got, you got 30 days to move out. Man, what? What should you say? I don't understand, Lord, but thank you. Because this has to be something that you have in your plan for me, not what I have in my plan for me. Because some of you would never move. Mm -hmm. You would never pack up and move. But God got a storm off the coast that can come in and do all the unpacking for you. If you let him. Amen. Amen. So understand that your life is not your own. You've been bought with a price. Therefore, we are to glorify God. Amen. Nobody makes negative plans for their life. Nobody in their right mind. Amen. But when Jacob was uh, digging the well, before he dealt, dug Jacob's well, he tried to dig several other wells. This is in your Bible. And every time he dug a well, the enemy would come and throw stones in it. So guess what Jacob had to do? He had to move on and dig another well. And guess what happened then? The, yeah, most stones. The enemy showed up, throw stones in that. Then he what? He moved, he moved on. Guess what he did? He didn't give up. He kept digging. Yeah. Amen? And guess what happened after that? Most stones. Yeah. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Amen? Somebody said, you know, if Jacob could say this, he, we stole it from Jacob. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. But when God got him to the place where Jacob will is today, yeah. Yeah. that's when the enemy ceased to throw stones in the well. God allowed him to go through those trials and tribulations to get him to the place where he wanted him. Do you see God working in your life like that? You gotta see God at work in your life. Your life is not your own. Nobody gonna talk to me that way. All right. Nobody gonna do me like that. All right. All right. Now, Bible says, let love be without dissimulation. Amen. He tells you when somebody walks up to you and slaps you on one cheek. Mm -hmm. He didn't say give him the fist. Hello? Why did he say that? Because if you have the love of God in you, you can do it. Remember, Jesus got slapped. You mean you're better than Jesus? Yeah. Jesus had a crown of thorns put on his head. You better than Jesus? When did you become better than Jesus? Let me help you. And when did you start bleeding for what people are how people are treating you? Show me the blood. Come on, talk to me. Amen? So God has to work on us for, for we are the nut that got to be cracked. We are the stiff neck. We are the jackass that God got to break. Are you listening? So when God saves us, he starts working on us. He got to break us to remake us. Somebody say, I was all right until, no, you weren't, no, you weren't, no, you weren't. And the first thing God want to show you is a review of yourself. This is what you were like. This is how you treated me. This is how you were, you were angry at me all the time when all I was doing is trying to love you. So let me show you. I'm going to show you somebody bigger and better than you that's going to get on your case just like you got on mine. Lord, why you let this happen to me? I'm trying to show you something. But if you let my love dwell in you, uh -huh. you can overcome that. Why? Because I've already overcome the world. Right. Look at verse 5. I'm going to wrap it up real quick. He said, for this ye know, that no whoremonger, hmm, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, your Bible says that, verse 5, who is an what? Idolater, uh-huh, notice, had any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Just in case you think you're going to get in one door and try to come around to the other. See, the idolatry. Every sin has a spirit attached to it, and all sins bow to idols. Do you understand what's going on? 
Do you really understand what's going on? Most people say, I don't know what got into me. Yeah. I know you don't know what got into you. Yeah. You need Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's why. And as long as you go around uh, without Christ, a whole bunch of other things are going to get into you. Right. Amen. When Jesus asked that man, what's your name? Yeah. He said, my name is Legion, yeah. for we are many. Yeah. Are you listening? Demonic possession. And as long as Christ, the Holy Spirit, is not in you, demons have a right to you. You know why? Because you pack their flesh. And their flesh needs a spirit attached to it. And the spirit that attaches itself to your flesh needs an idol to worship. And you'll find yourself bowing down to something or somebody before long. And it's all an affront to God. Are you listening, folks? This is what's going on in the spiritual realm. We're going to see that in chapter 6. It said, let no man deceive you. With what? Empty words. Vain means empty. For because of these things cometh the what? The wrath of God upon the children of what? God has set aside a day that he's going to deal with all rebellion. Anybody that does not or rejects Jesus Christ, God got a day for you. He got a day for you. You think you just got away with everything, everything looking good, you, you're cruising along, cooling the gang. Come on. And God's going to stop your little business like a fly into the flame. But he's giving you an opportunity to do what? Repent. Repent means to change one's mind. Amen. When you change your mind, Ooh. amen, but you have to have the word of God hidden in your heart to regulate your mind so that the spirit of God can lead you, guide you, and direct you. Does that make sense? Now, if you don't have the spirit of God, you don't have the word of God hidden in you, then your mind is adjacent to everything that's out in the world, all the traps that the enemy laid for you because you're a fool, you trap, you fall into again and again and again and again. Why? Because you have not renewed your mind. God wants you to what? Renew your mind. He said, be not ye therefore partakers with them. In other words, whatever God is delivering you from, don't go back there and hook it up. Don't go back there and hook it up. No. God wants you, he puts the truth in you, and now just like a fertilizer, that fertilizes the yard. You see no machine where people walk around and they turn the thing and fertilize just doing that? That's what your goal is right now. Take the word of God, load your little thing up, and then go around everywhere you go, just fertilizing everywhere you go. Taking the truth everywhere you go. That's what we're doing. That's your commission. That's your mission in life. Take the truth. But God has to get the truth in you before you can share the truth. Let your light shine before men that they may see and give God the glory. Can I just do take five more minutes? Thank you. He said in verse eight, you know, we got to walk as children of light. In other words, Jesus said in John chapter 11, when they were run out of a, a particular place and then they, the word came that Lazarus, whom you love, is, you know, had died and what have you. First news came, he was sick. He hadn't died yet. And Jesus, instead of getting up, and going to see about Lazarus, stayed there. He abode there several of the days. Somebody said, why, why wouldn't Jesus get up and, you know, this this whom you love, this person you love, Jesus. You know, you got word today, so your loved one was in the hospital, you just sit there? No, most people get up and like, boom, give me an Uber or something. I'm gone, right? right? But Jesus abode there for what? Several days. Then later the word came that, 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 he died, and now Jesus said, let's get up and let's go. And then one of the disciples brought this in and said, man, we just got ran. I'm putting him out there. Man, we just got ran out of that town you're going back to where Lazarus is. And you mean we're going to go back to that same town? And Jesus said, if a man walks in the day, uh-huh, he stumbles not because of the light. Okay? But if he walk, no, he says he walk in the night, he stumbles because there's no light in him. In other words, when you walk in the day, you don't stumble. But if you walk in the night, he said there is no what? There's no light. If you read it carefully in John chapter 11, he said there's no light in him. I thought that was strange. Why would Jesus say there's no light in him? 
See, if you walk in the dark and you have the light of the truth in you, you can walk in the dark. But if you don't have no light in you, you will stumble. So Jesus was not afraid to go back there where his life was threatened. Why? Because he was carrying the light of the truth with him. Are you listening? In verse 8, he says, for ye were sometimes darkness. Mm -hmm. Talking about your past. But now are ye what? Light. Notice the position. In the law. In other words, the command here is that now that you are born again, the Holy Spirit has placed you in Christ then this is the position from which you are to operate. Paul says, in him we live, we move, and we have our very existence. Is that right? Yes. He says, we are light. He said, walk as children of light. The Bible said, we should be wise as serpents. Yes. But what? Harmless yes. as does. Nobody should see you as a believer, amen, threatening their life. You remember Peter tried to do that in the Garden of Gethsemane? He took the sword out of the high priest and slashed off. He probably he was going for the head. But he dug and he took the ear off of Mathis. Huh? The same girl that was watching him do that to a, a, a relative when, when, when he got to the trial and talking about, I'll never leave you and all that kind of stuff. She's the one pointing him out. Yeah, you want, I was watching when you, I saw you with the sword in your hand. And you're trying to cut my cousin ear off and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> and at that time, he had, to, he had to deny Christ a third time. And then he heard that, that cock crow. <laughs> Whatever, however they sound. Amen? Amen? Because Jesus said, before the cock crows, before he crows, you're going to deny me three times. See, God knows what's already in us before we even make our, open our mouth. Is that right? He said, for the fruit of the Spirit. Watch what he says is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Now, this was added to the scripture to make it clear for you for clarification. So the Holy Ghost does not act unseemly. The Spirit of God does not act out like we act out. How many of you know when you're in the flesh? Let me put my hand up there. Some of y'all ain't got your hand up yet. Amen. I ask you how many of you know if you don't know, that means you're dull spiritually. You think your, 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 all your behavior is Holy Ghost filled. No. <laughs> Verse 10 says, proving what is acceptable unto who? Unto the Lord. God, so I'm not going to accept you going crazy and acting out and all that kind of stuff. Uh-uh, like you're not going to do that. And have no fellowship. You see that? With the unfruitful works of what? But rather do something. What the word reprove means to expose them. That's what it means. Huh? How do I expose it? I'm going to go tell it. No, that's not what we're talking about. Truth exposes. Truth is what God uses. See, if you have truth, then you can expose it. Huh? Huh? Like somebody drinking something out of a cup and they offer you some, right? Say, have some. I said, what you drinking? Oh man, I don't know, but it's so is good. And then you take it and you find out it's transmission fluid. They don't know it. They gobbling down transmission fluid, thinking some wine. Hello? Are you listening? Now, when you show them the bottle they got it out of, say transmission fluid, that's that's exposing them. And they stop drinking immediately, unless they want to die. That's how you do it. Are you listening? They're pausing in themselves, having a good time. Are you listening? So when we know the truth, and we expose those that are in darkness, we bring in the light. The truth has light with it, folks. It's not coming from you. It's coming from the truth that you're carrying. That makes sense? When we go to doctors, we ask the doctor, tell me the truth. What's wrong with me? And when he tells you the truth, Amen. He exposes what's going on in you that you didn't know. Because if you knew it, you wouldn't come to him for it and pay for it. Amen. Amen. So you go to the doc and doc say, hey, you got the heap of Jesus. And say, okay, doc, what do I need to do next? And he writes you a prescription. He said, I want to see you back in two weeks. 
I'm gonna give you a shot before you go. And you don't, you don't holler, you don't scream, you don't resist. You, you bend over and take the shot. Because you want to live. You see that? Death is a great equalizer. Nobody wants to die. We're going to all die. But nobody wants to die before their time. Amen? Amen. Verse 12 says, for it is a shame even to speak of these things which are done where? In the secret. Of them in the secret. Amen? Amen. You expose them with the truth, but you don't go around gloating over it. Even when God judges a sinner, he doesn't get like, oh, yeah, I'm getting happy right now. No. Amen. God prefers everybody to be delivered. Amen. He wishes everybody to be saved. So he's using the balance of our lives to save other folks. Now that you're saved. That makes sense to you? Amen. God is loading up your bag with seeds of truth. So you can go around the rest of your life spreading the truth like fertilizer. And I pray that you're doing that. Verse 13 says, but all things that are reproved are made manifest. How? <laughs> by what? By the light. Not by you. Girl, let me tell you about yourself. This is how I see it. No, that, that's not what he's talking about. Just give people the truth. The truth is, is powerful enough to stand on its own. Amen? For whatsoever do it make manifest is light. Not you. You're not light. Amen? You're just carrying the light. Verse 14, the last verse here says, wherefore, he said, awake, mm, thou that sleepest, and arise where? Everybody you know that does not have Jesus in them is dead. They're the walking dead. They're the walking dead. Think about that. You look at them as living, right? But they're actually dead. You know why? Because both the saved, watch this now, I'm going to show you. Because both the saved and the unsaved have funerals. Think about that. The saved, I mean, you know, I'm talking the truth. You can't go to the funeral and look at a casket before they open it up and say, oh, that person's gone to hell. Because you don't know who's in there. You don't know who occupied that garment. You don't know nothing about their life other than what you told, somebody told you. But God keeps good records. He keeps good books. He said, all souls are mine. And the soul that sent it shall surely be separated from me. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be separated from God. Amen? Don't want to be separated from him. But all things that we prove are made manifest by the light. For whosoever do it make manifest is light. Verse 14, wherefore, he said, awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead. He's showing you the process. Everybody has to have a resurrection, a quickening, because we were all dead in trespasses and in sin. So nobody, like, you look like you saved, you know? Let me find out. Amen? Do you have Christ in your life? Who is Jesus? Well, you're not. I'm dealing with one of those that still sleep. And then what we do, because we have the truth, we impart the truth to them. Amen? Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And Christ shall give the light. Who gives the light? Christ is the one that gives the light. You don't give the light. Amen? Christ gives the light. And once the light is received and lived and grows and matures, then God gets the glory. We all are lives that have been saved by Jesus Christ. And God wants from us his portion. What is his portion? The first part. Off the top. First thing in the morning. He wants, every, he wants, the, he wants the, the increase, the first increase. He wants everything that belongs to him just as a thank you to God. That's how you tell God thank you. Why are you going to hold back the portion that is due to the Lord? Would you want him to hold back on you when you need it? The answer is no. Bow your heads. Father, there may be one today out of the author's safety. 
that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ in the pardon of his or her sins. But Father, you said, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So Father, we impart the gospel of Jesus Christ. He lived, he died, he was buried, and he rose again on the third day. And he has all power given to him is in his hand. And whosoever will, let him, let him come. Let him come. Come just as you are. Don't try. Don't try to fix it up, clean it up. Just come just as you are. Surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. Not to man, but to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will quicken you. He will come believing that he is. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they've been sent? So, Lord, you've already set up the process. Now we are to walk in it. And, Father, we thank you for your deliverance. We thank you for the salvation of souls today. We thank you for those that have realized by your unctioning that they are sinners in need of a Savior. And now that they have accepted your son, then now let them be discipled and sanctified in their hearts that they may give you glory. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. What a savior we have in Jesus Christ the Lord. And the church said, amen. Amen. amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Because God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Well, we, we are asking you to, to give, but we said last week, God love what type of giver? Sure. Amen. Amen. Be, have a smile on your face in your heart when you give. He said, give not grudgingly nor out of necessity, which means don't let anybody compel you to give. You should freely give because it's a free will offering, which means that whatever you give, you give it freely and you do it as unto the Lord and not to man. And God will receive it. The widow who gave all that she had, huh? but the rich man came and he put a portion of his wealth into the treasury. And Jesus turning to his disciples asked the question, which of the two you believe gave the most? Now that was a math question. It was evident that the woman didn't have much. It was evident that the rich man had much. But God looked at it as though the little that she gave, she gave all. Where the rich man who could have gave all only gave a portion. Jesus gave us an object lesson to his disciples to show you how God looks at your giving, not how man gives. Amen? Amen. She was dependent on the Lord for everything. She was a widow. She was a widow. He didn't say, he didn't say that the rich man was a widow. He said, but the, the, the woman was a widower, which means she didn't have a husband to support her. And you know God can take care of you. How many believe that? He can, he can take care of you better. You can take care of yourself. I, I just believe that all my heart. Amen? All my heart. I just believe that God, and why would he save me and not take care of me? Why would he give me new birth and then let me die? No. Long as I feast on his word and be led by his spirit, God is more than able. How many believe that? He's more than able to take care of me. Amen. The fishes and the loaves, I think, teach you something. Say, what is this among so many? But when Jesus received it and held it up to heaven and he had his father bless it, hey, he told him to sit down in groups of 500. The Bible says 5,000 beside, this was just the men, beside their wives and children. So Jesus fed more than 5,000. Huh? Come on, talk to me. God shall supply all of your need. How? 
according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You go out there and brag today. I know a rich man. Say, so you do? What's his name? <laughs> Big wing. Let us pray, please. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come, God, Father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, God, we come right now like those who you know. Lord, we come right now like those who you know. Lord, we come right now like those who you know. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise right there. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, next Sunday is our youth Sunday. Amen. And we always ask the question, where are the youth? Say it with me. Where are the youth? Now, what you and I have to do is pray. Amen. We just pray. Lord, you know where they are. You know where every last one of them are. And what would you have me to do? Amen. I know in the back right now, we have uh, John and, and uh, Frida, I mean, Francine. I'm not sure who else is back. They're setting up to work with our children. We asked about three months ago, four months ago, how many of you would like to work with our children? Let me see your hand. I think I've seen nobody in here. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. All right. And all I'm saying is that, that whatever... Those kids need, they just need to be, they need to feel wanted, accepted and appreciated. Amen. Love. Amen. We're not going back there and pointing the finger and saying, now that, not, that's not the ministry we got for them. If anything, you set an example before them, just like the teacher goes to the board and put an example, then the child is smart enough, they can go and do the same thing. So just make sure we are walking circumspect. Before they, because they're watching us. Amen. I, I'm telling you, they're watching us. And they repeat right back, say, Pastor, you said this, and Amen. what's that in your pocket? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It busts you real quick. Amen. Amen. Kids have a way of doing that. But we want to make sure that we pray for them and encourage them. Amen. Uh, pastor and wife anniversary uh, th this month will be, uh, what, 24 years now? 24 years, we lose, we lose count, amen? amen, and what have you. Because we've been in ministry over uh, 30, 40 years, 40 years. We've actually been in ministry. We've only been here for about 24 years. God was bringing us along a long time ago, way, 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 way back, and what have you. So uh, we, we wouldn't just green when we got here, amen? amen? Amen. And we want to just thank God for each and every one of you. Brother Lancaster, would you stand up? Uh, but Lancaster's on trial. Amen. Uh, uh, he don't trial. Not, on, not in the court system. <laughs> in the congregation. Amen. Amen. We, we have to observe him and encourage him and pray for him. Amen. Amen. And uh, I know you have an announcement about them books. If you don't, you just tell them it's too late and they got two more hours or something. Uh, money. <laughs> Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. 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 Amen. Thank you, Brother Lancaster. Amen. And Ursh, uh, are we? Do you have the new programs back there for 2022? Y'all have those. Okay, when we get low on those, and, and you know, we ask people that when you receive these, hold on to them. The best way to hold on to them is put them in your Bible. It, then when you, and you, if you open up your Bible, if you put them in the book of Psalms, uh, Deacon William is going to always come from the Psalms when you open up the service, and you have it right there laying, looking at you, smiling. Amen. When you go through the program, it, it gives you the order of service. Amen. It gives you our statement of faith, what we teach and what we preach. And then it gives you the plan of salvation here. 
in case you don't know Jesus, a person can read through this and reach out and we can basically help them to understand the meaning and the purpose of salvation. Plus, it becomes a track. You can hand it to somebody else when you talk and say, hey, true love, hey, let me give you my program. I get another one. And look here, it tells you everything you need to know that I could ask, what time, all of that. And you come, it'll be all there for you. Amen? Amen. So make sure, uh, JR, do you have one? Yeah, hold on to that. Everything, my phone number, all of that information is right there, ready to be available. We want to encourage you to, as often as you can, keep coming. Amen. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. And you made that step this morning. But just be prayerful and ask God, what does he want from you? Lord, what do you want from me? And trust me, he will, if he wants something from you, he will clearly, clearly communicate that to you. We are, we are loving that you are here. We pray that you stay here. But at the end of the day, it's God and your choice as to what you do. Amen. Love you, brother. Yeah, love you. Yeah. And uh, for those that are uh, uh, not familiar, we have two baptisms coming up uh, on third Sunday and what have you. I believe it's two. Am I right? It's a one or two. Or maybe seven. Oh, it's going to be a wet Sunday. Amen. <laughs> maybe a wet sunday we had two last month and uh on third sunday so third sunday uh we kind of moved away from our first sunday especially because so many youth are coming forward that we just making youth sunday baptism sunday for our youth and what have you that's that's great that's great so we will prepare the water what we may have to do brother lancaster let some of that water out and then refill it with some warmer water just to take the chill out of it all out okay uh, you know what the ph balance and all that yeah okay so but he'll take care of that but we'll be ready on next sunday now this saturday if you come by the church there is a funeral going on but it's not true love and what happened pastor edwards has a member of friends of that church that they're having a service here and then of course on sunday morning they will be back here and then we'll come in behind them amen amen and we just want each one of you to be encouraged uh, in the Lord. Uh, John, would you stand up? This is John Francine. Just wave your hand. Oh, you're standing on up. Yeah. Pray your dance. All right. Okay. They, they have committed to sign up to work with our children uh, in the back. That's just the tip of the iceberg right there. And what we want to do there is we want to uh, make sure that when the kids come, they have a safe and a uh, environment where they can learn and they can grow. Amen. 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 So when, when, when we come into the service, just before I get ready to go and uh, give the message, then they will go in the back and whatever they have for them back there, uh, they will engage with. Uh, we're not going to promise them uh, pizza every Sunday. And the church said amen. But if they have food back there, they'll have it. But I'm not going to promise you you're going to have it every Sunday. But we have to have a budget. We have to go back to on third Sunday like we used to do deep and take up an offering for our youth so that they can have things back there. And if they got enough pennies in their piggy bank, they can probably get a pizza. Amen? Amen. But God's going to put it on somebody's heart to take care of that pizza. Is that right? Although, although hot wings or whatever. I'm getting, there. I'm getting hungry now myself. Amen. But whatever they have back there, uh, uh, they will communicate to me, so I'll give some idea of what's going on back there. And whatever you feel like you need to go back there and check on your children, feel free to just walk back there and look in there, because some people know what their kids are like, right? Yeah. And they just go back there and check on them. That's, we'll have no problem with that and what have you. So at the end of the day, we want to give God all the glory. Is that right? Yeah. Amen. So uh, anything else? Uh, yeah, we have our, our uh, Black History Month. Uh, this month, the month of February, we recognize it, and we're looking for three volunteers to give us some history. I think uh, our late pastor, Pastor Laverne, should be included in it. A lot of people heard of him, but they don't know anything about him and what have you. So if somebody can volunteer to tell us about Pastor Laverne, amen. Uh, everybody have a tendency to tell us about Martin Luther King, but there are other people that have made contributions 
And that's what we want to look at. So we're looking for three people uh, next Sunday with the baptisms to come and be ready to give a short talk on, you can pick, a, you can pick out whoever you want to, but we definitely want to not uh, overlook uh, Pastor Laverne. Is that okay? Okay, so uh, uh, John, Francis, did y'all kind of take charge of that? And whoever's going to be there, how you're going to present that, make that presentation next Sunday. So if y'all have some ideas or want to do that, check in with them and let them take it from there. Is that okay? That's okay. Any other questions? Any other questions? Going once, twice, three times, let's stand. Like they tell you at the all speak now. <laughs> uh, Lancaster is collecting. He has his cash register open over here. He, he can't make change, so don't use that as an excuse. <laughs> bow your heads, bow your heads. So Father God, we want to stop again and say thank you. We want to thank you for all the contributions that are being made by my wife, Joshua, Kevin, uh, Sister Coleman, and, and, the, and the rest, the Urshas, uh, everybody that it takes to put all of this together, Father, on each Sunday morning. And we need your help. We need your help. There are souls outside of this church that need to be saved. And Father, we need to get the word out of these walls that Jesus saves. And then give them an invitation to come in and to receive the word and make an intelligent decision about the savior of the world, Jesus the Christ. And Father, as we go from this place, we ask that you go with us. Lead God and direct us in the way that we ought to go. And we'll be careful, Father, before we close our eyes tonight to look to you, Father, and say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. You kept us. And Lord, watch over us. And if it be your will, wake us up in the morning. In Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. Amen. Hold them up high. Ain't no love. Like God's love. Ain't no love. Like true love. And guess what? Now turn to your neighbor. Tell him you love him. RJ, love you. And mean it. Amen. You are dismissed. Amen.